Adding bokeh to a photograph is a relatively simple process, and it really only involves adding an overlay image and then blending it and masking it to make it blend well with the original subject and background. So with this photo, I have a black background and I'm going to add an overlay that I've created. Now you can create your own by using holiday lights, string lights, Christmas lights, just string them up with a very simple plain background and photograph them at a very wide aperture, like 2.8 or wider. I've created a whole bunch of these. Uh, these are actually in my store and I converted them to black and white because it makes them easier to blend with the images. But I have 200 of these in this pack and I'm gonna use a couple of these to show you how you can apply bokeh images to a photograph. So I'm just gonna start by clicking and dragging and dropping one of these over my open Photoshop file. And what this does is it adds it as a smart object. Now I just need to place this and size it so it fits the entire image. And then I'm gonna click that checkbox at the top to commit that change. And now I just need to blend it with that layer below. Because I have a black background with that image in that main photo, I need to select a blending mode that will show these bokeh dots through. And the best one for that is going to be the screen blending mode. Now you can see that I still have some masking that needs to be done. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add a mask to this layer by clicking on the add layer mask icon in the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm gonna start with a gradient. So I'm gonna press G to access my gradient tool. And at the top, I'm gonna make sure that I have that reflected gradient selected. And I want to be going from black to transparent. Now, if you don't see black and you see white or a different color, reset your swatches by pressing the D key and then press X. And that will bring it to black as your foreground color. Then I'm gonna click in the middle of the image and hold my shift key to keep a straight line and then just drag across and then release. And now I have a starting gradient. And if I wanted to, I could kind of do this again a few more spots to kind of expand it, maybe over on the right and then over on the left. Now I'm gonna to go to my brush tool by pressing B and I'm gonna make sure that I have the opacity set to 20%. That will help ensure that I have a nicer transition between the subject and the background. So I just have to sweep over some of these areas uh, one or two times to get it. I'm gonna use my Wacom brush because this will make it a little bit quicker. If you need to, you can increase the opacity setting. I'll bump it up to 40% to speed things along a little bit. And I can increase or decrease the size of my brush quickly by using those right or left bracket keys. So you just wanna make sure that you have kind of all those dots on the subject. You wanna make sure that those are masked away. The beauty of masking is that you can remove them or add them back if you need to. So I'm gonna press X and bring some of it back here. I'm gonna drop my opacity back down to about 15% and then just drag across this line. So I don't have a perfect mask here, um, that's fine. I'm just gonna kind of continue on with this tutorial so you can see how to kind of finish this image. Now, most of the time, the bokeh lights in the background are not going to be black and white like you see here. They're gonna have a little bit of a color to them. Uh, in this case, I'd like to add kind of a warm color, just like the lights that she's holding in front of her face. And I'm gonna do that by adding a color fill layer. So I'm gonna go into my layers panel. I'm gonna select the adjustment icon and choose solid color. I'm just gonna select a kind of a warm orangish yellow color and click okay. Then I'm gonna change this blending mode to color but I don't want that color to affect all of the layers. I only want it to affect those bokeh lights. So I'm gonna clip this layer and I'm gonna do that by holding the Option or Alt key, hovering in between those two layers and then clicking. And now that color adjustment is only affecting that layer that it's clipped to. Now that color is a little too harsh. I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer close to 50%. I'm also gonna double click this and I'm gonna try and find one of these colors in her lights to see if I can maybe match it. And it looks like it's kind of changing it kind of to a funny red color. So I'm gonna hit cancel. I'm just gonna keep it as is. So that's 
pretty much it. Now from here, I would go in and I'd refine some of those masked areas over on the left, particularly to make sure that it blends a little bit better. But I wanna show you one more trick with using any type of smart object, um, especially if you're adding an overlay like this, uh, where you're maybe not 100% sure which one you want to use, which one is gonna work best. Adding it with a smart object is probably the best way to do it because you can easily go back and change out and swap out that photo. So I'm gonna go over to that bokeh layer. I'm gonna hover over in the blank space off to the right. I don't wanna be hovering over a mask or the thumbnail itself. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select replace contents. Now I can go into whatever file I'd like and obviously in this case, I'm going to select another bokeh image. So I'm gonna select that and then click place and then it swaps out that file, but it retains my mask and if I happen to have any layer styles applied or anything like that. It's just a really fast way of working with files inside of that layers document. If you have an image with a very neutral and simple background, like I do with this image of some cherry blossoms and I just photographed this with natural light with the wall in the background, then it's it's pretty easy to add these bokeh overlays. So I'll go into those files and I'm just gonna select one of these and I'll drag it over and again, just resize it. And these are high resolution files. They're just showing up a little bit small when I drag it over. I'm gonna click that checkbox to commit that change. And then I'll just change that blending mode again. But when you have a very simple neutral background, you're gonna to wanna to use either overlay or soft light. And I usually prefer soft light because it adds a little bit more of a natural a blend to that image. And then you would just mask it. So I'm gonna add a layer mask, make sure that brush tool is selected. And I have the opacity pretty low again. And I'll just paint with black to brush away those dots. All right, so I have this layer masked. And another thing you can do is stack these bokeh overlays. So let me go back into those overlays. And this time I'm gonna find some that are a little bit bigger. So I'll drag and drop that over. And I'll just resize this like I did before. And press return or enter to commit that. Change my blending mode to soft light. And now I have two of those images stacked. The only problem is that now I need to mask the same layer over again, but you can get around that by using groups inside of Photoshop. So I'm gonna select both of these layers, both of those bokeh layers, and then click on that little folder icon at the bottom. That grouped both of those layers together. Now I just need to kind of steal my mask that I made on that one layer and apply it to the entire group. So I'm gonna click and drag until it highlights over that group and release. And now that mask is applied to both of the layers inside of that group. And I can go in and refine the mask as needed. And just like with the image of that black background, I can make changes to this entire group. And the quickest way to do that is with a layer style. So over on the right side of that group, I'm gonna double click, which will apply a layer style to the entire group. Then I'm gonna select color overlay. I have a yellow selected, but I want to drag the color opacity quite low. That's good, I'll go ahead and click okay. And after doing that, I may need to go in and refine that mask a little bit more to make it all kind of blend together and give that bokeh background a little bit more realistic look. 